Phoenix TV 13, Biloxi, Gulfport, Pascagoula. Good evening. In the top of the news, a Phillips Petroleum Company gas well in Hancock County, north of the Bay Waveland area, blew out yesterday afternoon, and the fire may last for a month and a half. The fire apparently started around 1.30 yesterday afternoon. Workers in the field checked the well around 1. It was fine, but around 2, they saw smoke, and the fire was well underway. Phillips officials aren't sure what started that fire. It was one of 14 gas-producing wells they operate in the area. They are assuming gas started seeping to the surface around the 8 and 5 8 inch casing used down in the well. The well head was intact at 2, but during the evening a crater formed around the well and the head was either sunk into the ground or broken off. That means the only way to put it out is to drill a relief well into the same zone and then flood the zone with water and heavy mud. Authorities say that'll take at least 45 days. No one is sure exactly how much gas is burning up, but the well was producing in excess of a million cubic feet of natural gas per day. That much natural gas would cost the average homeowner more than $2,250 per day. Good evening, and welcome to the 5 o'clock edition of Newsline 13 with Steve Dickerson, Pat McManus, and meteorologist Cal Sisto. As most of you noticed today, postmen were on the job delivering mail. An accord was reached late last night between postal workers and officials of the Postal Department, and we have this report on the agreement. The postal workers got what they wanted most. The old contract guaranteed no worker would be laid off just because some machine could handle mail better or faster. The new contract keeps that guarantee. But to win that point, the unions had to give the Postal Service what it wanted most. That was a wage settlement not too far out of line with President Carter's call for holding federal employees to raises of 5.5% this year. The postal workers will be getting about 6.5% if they okay the contract. That raise includes a so-called cost of living allowance. It's well below the real inflation rate. Actually, the whole pay raise, allowance and all, won't fully offset this year's inflation that could hit 8%. That still could be a problem as union leaders take the package back to rank and file members. Getting their okay may take several weeks. Tony Sargent, ABC News, Washington. Even though there was an accord signed between workers and officials of the Postal Service, all is not well. Many workers are not satisfied with the terms of the contract, especially those in New York. Here's more about their reaction in this report. As New York's postmen gathered mail for their rounds, many were angry that their wage package totals only 19.5% over a three-year period. I think we're getting shafted because we got more on the last contract. We're going back, we're receding instead of going ahead. Would you be willing to strike in order to try to get I'm, more? I'm not saying anything. What the union calls for, we, I would do. Some in the union wanted to strike in protest, but leaders voted the idea down, believing that on this issue, the militant New York local stands alone. We felt we did not have enough people who were willing to strike for it. There was a divided thought on this thing right down the line, and we felt that we couldn't have a solid front. We were in trouble. Furthermore, we found that throughout the country, we were out there alone. We had no support from other locals who said only, only if the national goes on strike would they go on strike. So New York mail trucks hit the streets with postal workers planning to campaign against the new contract nationwide, a fight most New York mailmen think they'll lose. Bill Stewart, ABC News, New York. An agreement between city employees and Mayor Ernest Morial of New Orleans cleared the way for garbage men there to go back to work today. The city agreed not to take any disciplinary action against the employees who walked out. But it was also agreed the employees who walked out would not be paid for those days. And a dispute over a lack of enough trucks to do the job has apparently been resolved also, as 80 trucks were reported to be back on the road today. Washington area bus and subway workers defied a back-to-work order there today and closed down the capital city's transit system. About 2,000 workers began the walkout yesterday in a cost-of-living dispute, and more than 4,800 workers stayed home today. Here's more in this report from Washington. 
Buses and subway trains were parked for the second day of a wildcat strike. Operators were honoring picket lines set up by mechanics because a 20 cent an hour cost of living increase wasn't in their latest paychecks. The drivers are refusing to drive despite a federal court order to go back to work and the suspension of 180 of their fellow workers. For commuters, the strike has meant packed garages and few places to park, even though parking restrictions have been lifted. The city and federal governments suspended arrival times for employees, and many businesses staggered hours for their workers. But still, the traffic moved slowly all day. Stories of hours spent in a car in 90-degree temperatures were commonplace, and air pollution, already past the dangerous level, got worse. Dick Sanders, ABC News, Washington. Hi, I'm Susanna Glidden, and I want to show you the most amazing ambassador handbag you've ever seen. Everything here comes with the bag and fits into its own special place. It organizes everything you carry. A change purse, something every woman carries, snaps into the bag right up here. Two key rings, your house keys, you never have to fumble for them, your car keys. A waterproof cosmetic case fits into its own pocket. Here's something special, a completely fitted ambassador wallet. It organizes your checkbook, your pictures and credit cards, and it has a place for money when you carry it separately. Even an overloaded wallet like this slides right into this huge special pocket, an exclusive ambassador feature. A pocket for your glasses too, roomy main compartments here and here. And there's more. We call this the mail pouch. Perfect for letters, bills, receipts. And look at the fittings in the mail pouch. A convenient address book with a matching memo pad and a ballpoint pen, too. All included free. Another pocket here, and on the back, even two more pockets. All this fitted in this beautifully styled bag. But that's not all. Ambassador custom embroiders your own initials right here. This great bag, complete with all accessories, is just $14.95. It's crafted of Ambassador's deep grain Madrid vinyl. Pick your ultimate bag in tan, brown, black, or bone. Send for your bag right now. Use it for 30 days. Then if you aren't convinced it's the greatest value ever, return it for a full refund. But keep this cosmetic case as a gift. Now here's how to order. For speedy delivery, call 1-800-228-5454. That's 1-800-228-5454. Send no money. When your handbag arrives, pay just $14.95, plus COD, postage, handling, and applicable sales tax. That's 1-800-228-5454. 1-800-228-5454. Operators are standing by. This is a free call. Biloxi police have arrested a 16-year-old juvenile in connection with the murder of Sherry Taylor of Biloxi earlier this month. Ms. Taylor was stabbed several times and raped in that murder at the CSAN Trailer Park in Biloxi. Jeffrey Riley, a maintenance worker at the Trailer Park, was arrested last night in connection with the murder. Dave Vincent was on the scene today, and we'll have a full report from him on our 6 o'clock show. The economy seems to be getting better if the recent boom in sales is any indication, but at the same time, inflation has almost as large a boom. In fact, it's largest in three years. Here's more on the economy in this report. Commerce Secretary Krebs told a news conference the nation's economy during the spring had its fastest growth rate in two years. Most of the advance was due to a boom in car sales. At the same time, the inflation rate had its biggest jump in three years. Real growth for the first half fell a little bit below our expectations, and uh, price increases were uh, higher than we had uh, projected. Mrs. Krebs noted that food prices rose 17% during the first half of the year and helped push up the inflation rate. The White House said the inflation rate reading was not good. Some economists are concerned about a possible recession by the end of the year unless inflation is brought under control. Joe Templeton, ABC News, Washington. A legislative leader from the state says mobile homes could be used to house state prisoners now being kept in county jails. Chairman of the Senate Corrections Committee, Con Maloney, says he suggested the action after the unsuccessful attempt by District Attorney Albert Nikase to take 34 prisoners to the state penitentiary at Parchman earlier this month. Correction officials were receptive to the idea and have located several trailers that could be used. Correction officials added, though they see a need to relieve the county's overcrowded jails, they do not plan to take any emergency action to take some 800 prisoners from those crowded county jails. 
The Justice Department officials today began questioning Alabama authorities about an allegation that a paid informer took part in Ku Klux Klan activities. We have this report on the effect of the investigation and then what the effect is having on establishing guidelines for paid informants. The first stop of Justice Department investigators will be the Birmingham City Hall. Here, they will meet two high-ranking police officers. These officers consider FBI informant Gary Thomas Rowe a suspect in the bombing of the 16th Street Baptist Church. The 1963 blast killed four young girls, and so far, one former Klansman has been convicted. The two officers won't talk on camera, but off camera, they say they gave Rowe a lie detector test, and he showed signs of considerable deception when asked if he participated in that church bombing and other violent crimes in the early 60s. FBI records show that Rowe got payments of $20 to $300 a month for five years as the FBI's top informant on the Klan. Alabama Attorney General Bill Baxley, who will also be interviewed by Justice Department investigators, disagrees with Birmingham police and says Rowe is not a suspect in the church bombing. But the chairman of the church's board of trustees says as an informant, Rowe must have known about the bombing in advance and he's bitter about the FBI's role. I think the FBI would be equally as guilty if they found out that he participated in it and they paid him off. Seemingly, the FBI should have been more informed to such an extent that uh, no payment should have come about. Rather, they should have prosecuted from the very beginning and not wait 20 years or more. The Birmingham police say no matter how the Justice Department investigation turns out, they will continue to treat Gary Thomas Rowe as a suspect in the church bombing and other crimes, and they will continue their hunt for evidence. From Birmingham, Steve Petru for ABC News. NASA officials say Skylab appears to be doomed. The officials say the craft has failed to respond to attempts to put it back on a course that would keep it from entering the Earth's atmosphere. NASA had hoped they could keep it in orbit until space shuttle crews could reach the 84-ton spaceship and send it into safe orbit. Officials said the craft could fall to the Earth as early as next spring, but said it has little chance of hitting anyone or anything. Almost every nuclear power plant that has been proposed in this country has met stiff protests from area residents. Citizens groups protests in New Hampshire centered around a proposed plant there have met opposition from workers of a Pennsylvania plant who disagree with the critics of the industry. Here's details on the controversy in this report. The controversy about nuclear energy today, you may be surprised to know that the world's first industrial atom smasher is in Forest Hills, Pennsylvania, just a couple of miles from the Pittsburgh line, and that it was in operation 41 years ago. That was eight years before atomic energy wrote an end to World War II. So it's appropriate that Westinghouse still uses this site to test atomic safety. The workers here get upset when they hear what they consider to be irrational charges about atomic energy. Westinghouse has brought 38 nuclear power plants into operation around the world. Their workers are the ones who test to make certain it's safe. So they believe they know what they're talking about. It's been tested. You can uh, tell by our facility right here at Forest Hills that we do a lot of uh, ECCS study, it's, which is called emergency core cooling. We uh, do all types of uh, design verification study to make sure that uh, a plant is safe, secure from any type of uh, explosion and such. Lynn Hines, Channel 4 Action News. Pat will be back with the sports and we'll have more news right after this. There, Miss Bonner, this Curtis Mathis TV is yours. I can't believe you're actually giving me the remote control free. Oh, you won't get in trouble, will you? Oh, I'd risk anything for you, Miss Bonner. Martha. Davis! The sign one folks to know about our great offer. Buy this Curtis Mathis and for a limited time, get the remote control free. A $100 value. Let's spread the word. <laughs> it just spread, sir. This special offer now at Magnolia TV, Biloxi, Patel TV, Gulfport, and Nolan's TV, Moss Point. Okay, take it away. Okay, thank you, Steve. In relation to that controversy around the troubles of Yankees manager Billy Martin and his star hitter Reggie Jackson, Joe Morgan of the Reds thinks Reggie's a victim of circumstances. Morgan says he was the wrong guy to put in front. He's a little kid who found a big candy store and wanted to eat it all at once. Pete Rose hit safely in his 33rd straight game last night and goes for number 34 tonight. Here's a look at the Cincinnati Star. Cincinnati's Pete Rose showed why he is also known as Charlie Hustle. 
Hustle kept his hitting streak alive at 33 straight games in the fifth inning against Philadelphia. Rose hit a smash on the ground off the glove of second baseman Ted Sizemore and beat it out for his only hit in five times up. That was the start of a three-run inning for the Reds, but Cincinnati lost to the Phils 8-6. Rose is now four games shy of the National League record of 37 straight games, which Tommy Holmes set in 1945. The Reds and Rose next play in Montreal. Dave Martin, ABC News. The Golden Bear, Jack Nicklaus, was hotter than the weather today as he slammed into the lead in the second round of the Philadelphia Golf Classic. Playing in 89 degree weather with high humidity, Nicklaus shot a seven under par 64 for a two day total of 130. That 64 tied the tournament record for one round and his two round total was a new mark. Nichols had a four-shot lead over Fuzzy Zoller and Miller Barber. Dick Nolan was all smiles as veteran Saints put on the pads for the first time at Vero Beach last night. Chuck Muncy was in camp today, caught a cramp, or had a cramp, but was able to finish his work in the heat. Tackled Darlin Moore, suffered back spasm, and fullback Jack Holmes also had cramps in the morning's workout. Saints cut eight players today, and one, Gary Hivranik, an end from Chicago, left camp on his own. Those cut included tackle Nathan DeSaint, B. Saint of Southern University, tight end Joe Ware and end Bobby Smithard of Southern Mississippi. Also cut were in Woodrow Carter, linebacker George Meyer, halfback Joe Smith, receiver Mike Williams, and linebacker Ernest Ratliff, all out of New Orleans. The largest skeet shoot ever held in the South and the sixth largest in the United States got underway this morning at the Mobile Shooting Center. Jack Myers of the, uh, the Shooting Center explains this shoot. This is the name of the shoot pad is the shrimp bowl open. Uh, it is a skeet shoot and four guns, 400 targets, 100 targets to, for each gauge of the gun. We're going to start out with the 410, the 20, the 28, and the 12, and shoot 100 targets at each gauge. Do they shoot that 100 targets right at one time? Yes, each, each uh, event is shot 100 targets at a time. You know, we will start off with the 410 event Saturday morning and go into the 20 gauge event Saturday afternoon. Uh, the 28 gauge event starts Sunday and the 12 Sunday afternoon. How about spectators? Are they welcome over here? Spectators are more than welcome and there's no charge for spectators. To get to the shooting center from the Mississippi coast, go to I-10 to the first exit in Alabama. Then you go north to the dead end, then east four miles. There'll be a sign on your left showing you where to get into the shooting center. Veteran heavyweight Ernie Shavers said he'd like to line up a match this fall, either Ken Norton or Jimmy Young. The 33-year-old Shavers is ranked sixth in the heavyweight division. He recorded his 53rd knockout in 52 bouts, 62 bouts, uh, by beating 26-year-old Harry Terrell in the first round last night. He knocked him out in the first. 19-year-old Thomas Hearns is becoming one of the most talked about young fighters in the country. Last night in Detroit, he kept his unbeaten pro record intact with a second round knockout of Texas welterweight champion Raul Aguirre. We have this report. The theme song from Rocky and the reaction it drew from the audience allowed no mistake to be made. Detroiter Tommy Hearns was the hometown favorite, and he didn't disappoint the crowd of more than 3,000. The Michigan welterweight king, ranked 10th in the United States, figured to have a tough bout against Texas welterweight champ Raul Aguirre, but it wasn't close. Hearns took Aguirre out at 2.08 of the second round, his 10th consecutive professional win against no defeats. It was an important fight. We put him in with a puncher, which we thought for the first time, but, it, you know, each time that we try to put the guy on a higher level, it just seems like the guys are still in no place with him. I don't know what we're going to have to do. We'll probably have to just get the champion of the world probably to fight. Where does he go now? What's the goal? Well, we intend to have about four more fights and challenge for the world championship. In January, we intend to challenge for the world championship. The man Stewart would like Hearns to fight is Olympic champion Sugar Ray Leonard, but he claims Leonard is ducking him. Bob Page reporting from Detroit for ABC News. Plans are being made to hold statewide competition in wrist wrestling here on the coast in mid-September. Sam Furlow, who is heading up the effort, told us this afternoon plans for the competition were sanctioned by the World Wrist Wrestling Corporation of Petaluma, California, where national competition will be held in October. For information, you can call Sam Furlow in Gulfport at 864-3835. Second leading scorer in soccer history, Isabio of Portugal has signed the New Jersey Americans of the American Soccer League. Contract runs through the 1979 season. Eusebio played for the Toronto Metros of the North American Soccer League in 1976, of course, scoring 16 goals in 21 games. We'll have more sports for you at 6 o'clock. And I think, oh, get out of here. Do your news. You don't want to warm up for the championship? Not only that, I ain't going to talk to him. <laughs> 
Well, there were some sharp ups and downs on Wall Street this week, but the Dow Jones average finished the week close to where it was last Friday. Here's a more in-depth look at this week's trading in this report. After soaring 15 points last Friday, the market apparently ran out of steam, closing down Monday three quarters of a point. Tuesday, interest rate worry sent the Dow plummeting 10 points. But that loss was wiped out Wednesday when the average gained 11 and three quarter points. Good earnings reports and a more favorable interest rate outlook were given as some reasons. Thursday, the market gave up two points. And Friday, a roller coaster week of trading ended with a decline of five and one quarter points. Bill Rice, ABC News. Meteorologist Cal Sisto and the weather right after this. <laughs> Join us right here on TV 13 every weekend for the finest in sports. Looks like here. What does it look like across the rest of the country? Well, actually, it's not too bad out over most of the rest of the country, Steve. Okay. Let's take a look at some temperatures from early this afternoon. This afternoon's local map is just the culmination of a pattern that we've been seeing developing all week long. The week started out on the dry side, and then eventually the warm, humid air spread up further and further into the tri-state area as the week progressed, and we saw the showers get further and further north and more intense. A complication was a disturbance in the upper atmosphere that moved across the area and is still moving across today, which has increased the thunderstorms, particularly down over the Gulf, where several severe warnings were required earlier this afternoon and still are in effect in several water spouts side as well and increase the thunderstorm activity along the Gulf Coast. The heaviest showers are occurring right in our local area. The, the last hour we had uh, uh, fairly heavy rain right here in Biloxi. Several showers are scattered across the southern parts of the tri-state area. The heaviest activity located up a little bit west of Tuscaloosa and right around the Natchez into the Alexandria area in Louisiana. Temperatures range from a 97 at Shreveport down to a 74 at Baton Rouge. Our satellite photograph this morning showed uh, a lot of cloudiness in the Gulf Coast, along the Gulf Coast, and spread down well into the Gulf of Mexico. Okay, right through there. And also a very clear area to the north of us representing high pressure there, but significant cloudiness to the west of that area as well. More very bad weather and a lot of thunderstorms for the northern plain states today. The result of uh, the uh, problem there, the thing that resulted in all these thunderstorms, a, a stationary front which spread from a low pressure system in western Kansas right on up into New England and several severe thunderstorms breaking out. Severe thunderstorm watches in effect now for northern Kansas, southern Nebraska and until 10 p.m. tonight central time for northern Illinois, northern Indiana and southwestern Michigan as well. Very heavy rains there. Some quantities even over Iowa of five inches or more in the last uh, day and several severe flooding problems occurring there as well. A surface trough here down along the Gulf Coast Upper air disturbance causing a big outbreak of thunderstorms this afternoon, that continuing into tonight. Temperatures ranging from 102 early this afternoon in Wichita Falls to a 50 up in Rollins, Wyoming. Our readings right now, we have humidity standing at 90%, barometers at 30.15 and it's steady. Winds are out of a south-southwesterly direction about three miles an hour. We've had 0.31 inches of rain here today. Temperature right now is 81. We had a high of 89, a low last night of 76. The forecast calls for variably cloudy skies tomorrow, and there's still a chance of some thunderstorms around, especially in the afternoon and evening. Low tonight in the mid-70s and a high tomorrow around 90. Chance of rain 30% tonight, 30% tomorrow, 20% tomorrow night. In the three-day outlook, still a chance of afternoon and evening thunderstorms. 
Out in the Gulf, variable winds at five to 10 knots, seas two to three feet, if a little higher in some thunderstorms. Tides at Biloxi Bay high tomorrow afternoon at 1246, low tomorrow night at 1107. And there's Pas Christiane and Pascagoula tides. Sunrise tomorrow is at 6.08, sunset, sunset at 7.56 p.m., and the Pascagoula River at Merrill is where it was yesterday at 4.8 feet. So uh, it's pretty bad out there right now, but it looks like it will slowly improve during the weekend, Steve. Okay, so we don't need to build the ark. No, not yet. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Fans waited outside Radio City Music Hall, excuse me, in New York last night to see their favorite stars at the premiere of Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. The movie features Peter Frampton and the nation's hottest rock group, the Bee Gees. Here's more in this report. We want Frampton! We want Frampton! Frampton followers, Bee Gees worshippers, Alice Cooper cultists, thousands of them showed up outside of Radio City Music Hall to wait patiently for a glimpse of a great one, any great one. And when the limousines cruised up, there was Sergeant Pepper's weather vane, also known as Billy Preston. What do you think about the movie? I think it's fantastic. Why? Because I'm in it. <laughs> no, no, because it's, it's the Beatles songs, you know, that makes this movie so fantastic. And all the beautiful people in it, you know, I'm proud to be a part of it. George Burns, accompanied by his ever-present blonde companion, was in good spirits. How are you doing? Good. I'm all excited. I'm getting in for free. <laughs> in the film, Alice Cooper plays evil. He turns people's minds to jelly. What do you think about the movie? I think I'm evil in it. Oh, did you mean to be? Yes, I'm very mean in it. But Frampton never showed up. He's still in the hospital recuperating from an auto accident. And horror of horrors, the Bee Gees slipped in through a side door. And I have some very bad news. I have just been informed that the Bee Gees are already inside. You're kidding. No, no, no. We've been here all day. No. Only premiere. I mean, that's ridiculous. What's a premiere for? I discovered a Bonanza. <laughs> That's right. When you come to Bonanza in Gulfport, you'll discover a Bonanza of good things to eat for the whole family. We discovered a Bonanza. From our guaranteed great steak. Now that's a Bonanza. To our famous Bonanza salad bar. To the best service in town. What a Bonanza. Discover a Bonanza. Discover. I discovered a Bonanza. A bonanza. Courthouse Road in Gulfport. Okay, that's it for five, but we've got another hour of news. ABC next and more local news at six, and then again at 10 o'clock. Dave Vincent this weekend. We hope that you have a very nice weekend.